Oh, no. Solo headphones. We've got too much background right now. That's okay. And why is not reading my camera? Remember that we started this and it's all messed up. And then Grandpa was That's how I remember. I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. okay. so, pretty well, at least four of the Chuck brothers, which are now almost in my age. But <laughs> some of them are. The only reason why. Oh, here we go. Well, let's see if it reads it. I might have to start again. Hold on. Yay! Can you hear me? Shake your head yes if you can hear me. Okay, because I think I have my sound down. But who knows? Well, I want you to know that I've worked on all kinds of ways and I'm going to do some spraying. You know how Mitzi did her core paper last week? Where she did the, the um, coordinations with the paint already on it? And so, can, you can still hear me though, right, Jan? Okay. Well, what I decided to do was to try, I took some re regular, it's called Bazile paper, I believe. B-A-Z-Z-I-L. Who, who knows? I'm Cajun. That's the way we pronounce it. <laughs> so, I took um, some markers and I actually just sprayed over it and then took sandpaper and so I, I really accomplished similar effects even though I didn't use core paper. And this, of course, is a good paper, but still, it did about the same thing. But what I did for my example tonight was I tried some different things added on top. Uh, this one actually has two layers of acrylic, and I'm going to spray with a marker on top of it and see what kind of uh, results I get with it. I took some, this is with, uh, I think this one was gesso. This is just so uh, one of these. This is uh, no, no, no. This is dilutions. This is the dilutions white linen. See, because you can see through it. And then this is this is just so. And this is white. No, this is white acrylic. This is just so. I have it on the thing. So what I did was I basically was trying to see if I could make my own type of core paper using other substrates with that, but I'm going to spray over them real quick. And so, and then I'm going to run them through the uh, ebosser or the Teresa Cullen's cut and boss, but I have an ebosser, so either one of those will do or, or any machine that you have. And as we said before, don't worry about stuff. Just be happy, be happy. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'm going to do is pull out the color. I should have had this set up already. <coughs> and then we'll start coughing. How great. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, I haven't coughed all day long, and now I'm going to start coughing. And I'll take one. Let's try the um, acrylic. And again, this was just a standard cardstock with an acrylic on it. I'm not really happy with this. <coughs> oh. I don't know why. All of a sudden I've got a frog in my throat or something. Probably Mitzi gave it to me. I wonder if you could catch coals over the internet. But I just got so ramped up with her idea and thought, wow, you know, there's got to be other ways to produce this. 
I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. It's not all the way and it's kind of spotty looking, but I think it'll still give me the, the uh, look I'm looking for. Now my main, the one that I'm most excited about is this one because it not only has a layer of the blue, it's got copper underneath. And so I was going to use it like a scratch board effect, which I thought would be really, really cool to take something and actually scratch it off. And so let me see if I can find my black. And on one of them, this one, I actually used chalk marker too. So I've got some different things underneath just to see what it might look like. <clears throat> This has been kind of an off week for me. I haven't felt really well, so <clears throat> as goofy as it sounds. And that's why I thought I would attempt to do a very small project today. Yeah. I think I'd like to take it outside and try it on an easel for you guys too. It really works well on an easel. That's primarily where I do a lot of my artwork is on an easel. And you see I'm, I'm breaking my rule. I'm crossing it on the thing which makes it spotty looking. But again, it's just for a test, but that's sure. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't appear to be actually lifting the... Um, I was worried about it lifting the acrylic, but it doesn't seem to be. There we go. I just needed to increase the air pressure. So there's our black one. <clears throat> I've been really excited about it. As silly as it sounds, I've been very excited about it because, again, I love the coordinations paper. I think it's really, really neat. But when you can actually bring in colors and do, you know, like Mincy was showing us the different colors that she had on it, if we could go ahead and brush our own colors on and then be able to pull it through, that would be really interesting. And then I was thinking using that chalk marker on it, too, if that would make a difference. So let me see what I can find over here for chalk for this one. <clears throat> it's got. Uh. Oh, there we go. Such a pretty blue color. I love these markers. I just have a marker fetish, that's all. So many markers and so little time to do it. It looks like clouds. But I've really been just so excited about the whole possibility of making things that are uniquely yours instead of having, yeah, I know I love I love purchasing stuff from other people that's already pre-made, but sometimes making your own stuff is so cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these through through the uh, spell binders. Well, the, these uh, spell binders, these are the embossabilities. This one has that uh, herringbone on it. So I'm going to run it through there, and I'm going to run this probably through it as well. So give me just a second while I run it through. Find my shim. Come on out, shim. There's my shim. And, of course, it is like one. It's not thick enough, Deb. Okay, so let me take this shim out. It means, instead of B, isn't it so nice I'm off camera talking to myself and y'all are saying, well, who is she talking to? Oh, that's too thick. I'm trying that. I'm trying not to get a nosebleed doing that. <laughs> Hang on, y'all.
Our first one's coming out. I just adore this machine because I can actually walk over, throw it in, and it comes out. And it gives me such a beautiful look at the deep emboss. I mean, you can hear it even snapping out. I have to wash that out, but there's my emboss. And then, <clears throat> of course, you can never find the tools that you need at the time, but I got some very fine grit sandpaper. Now, I was really hoping... No, that's not my dual color one, thank goodness. But this is the one that there should have been... Oh, yeah, look, the white's coming through. You can see the white from the acrylic. But I figured that if I really sanded the dots down and just kind of gently did the lines... Oh, it's working. It's working. I'm going to show you in just a second. I don't know if you can see, but my lines are white and my dots are green. Can you see it, Jan? Okay, uh, the green is actually this, and the white is the acrylic paint that I painted. What's happened is because the emboss was so deep on these dots, it actually broke through the acrylic uh, cover, and it's made it a two-tone, so that's kind of cool. Yay! Success, success! Okay. Now, my next one, now this one really was going to be a, a biggie for me. This is, it's three layers of acrylic. It's, it's got metallic copper. It also has a blue, and then it's on this base again. So let's see what I can get out of it. Excuse me really quickly as I turn around and, okay, I think this will be, I think I'll do it this way. And hopefully this too will give us good results. And we'll all be happy. And as I said, today's just going to be a quickie, but at least it is something. And I thought that Miss, Mitzi's technique was so cool. Mitzi's technique is so cool that I wanted to make sure that again, and see this one, you could actually take, where's my little tool? With this, if you didn't want to emboss it, you could actually take like a needle and come back, this one isn't as needly as it needs to be, or a razor knife, I don't have anything sharp with me right now. Nobody's allowing me near sharp instruments, I'm just joking. But you could actually take it and do like scratch board and peel the colors off. So you could scratch it, but let's see if it did work. I'm praying it did. And this is just a, a fine grit sandpaper. Okay, so I'm seeing blue. And then if I... What you would want to do maybe is make a little tool and go back and just really hit the areas that you want the next color to come through. So it would be, excuse the dust, but it should have the copper too. I'm going to just go ahead and sand. Of course, you know, today I couldn't find sanding blocks. They're packed up somewhere. They're probably out in the shop, to be honest with you. Although I know I have two or three of them in here. But you can see, what I would do is take a look, that there are actually copper colored and the blue in there, and then you can see some of the, the uh, green coming through. So it's really kind of like another very interesting project. So I think for a background, you could actually take, say, a small eraser. Um, I'm out of nibs right now, but I have one of these kind of tools that's for drafting where you erase your lines with it. 
and you could actually run. Let's see if my little one will work. So you could actually run something like this on it. And pull more color off or less color. And I, I really I really like some of the effects that I'm getting with it. And then to really do something startling and different, you could spray it all down with alcohol and really make a difference. So are you muted, Jan? Ah, that's why I can't hear you. Okay. So I know that, uh, again, Mitzi did a terrific job with her technique. But then there's always, you know, that's one of the, the great things about us doing these things is that we can always do some more interesting stuff. And it just really occurred to me that this would be something fun to try. And so that's why I decided to do it. I love, I love just the core effects that you get from it because you can change just traditional. If you don't have anything that's patterned, you can make your own pattern paper. And believe it or not, you know, I know I love embossed, but you can actually take an iron and iron this flat if you didn't want it to be raised. And I was trying another technique, and so far I'm still working on it. I do a lot of wax resist in my fabrics. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but you take an iron. I don't know why. Terry was talking about that last night, that when she did her video, when you bring it up close, it looks like blinds almost. But um, you take wax and put on it, and then you make a resist with it. And so I was working on doing some of that too with the with the markers, uh, taking Crayolas. I like to really take paraffin and put it on there, and then make a resist, and then shoot over it, and then take. What I do is I take paper. You can even take wax paper. You take it and you take an iron and you heat it on top. And what I use instead of an iron with my paper is I use my little clover mini iron, and and do this, and it removes the wax. You can use like cotton and take the wax off too. So that's what I'm working on because I, I really I have some some ideas for it and we'll see. But as time progresses, we'll have more and more ideas out there. And again, this was just a quickie because today has been kind of like rough, but uh, I just thought I wanted to touch base with you and show you some of the different things. And again, this one would do probably about the same as the other two. Let's see. We'll run it through real quick and see. I just, I've really fell in love with this technique since she's introduced it. It is like super fun for me. Mmm, it likes that better. And again, really, really good emboss. Sticks nice. This is, I think, the one that I just put gesso on it. But what I tried to do was do several different things. This one really, I don't think, is going to give us... Ah. Make sure you don't catch the thing. Uh, oh, that's what it was. It was gesso and chalk. Excuse me. I used a chalk marker, and you can see that the chalk marker is still there, and it's bleeding through with the grain. I don't know that it's coming through that well on the thing, but um, I took chalk marker. I actually sprayed it with a fixative, too, on top. Then I just sewed it, and I just kind of did splotches around so that you could see. But the chalk really is working, and it's holding the color. And that's amazing to me, because I thought for sure that it would leave us. I thought it would go. But again, really, really pretty. And she's really hit on some great stuff. And then you could go over this and spray it with another color and come back and do it again. So just to play off of Mitzi's stuff, um, I really liked this one where you had the two colors that came through, the white from the acrylic and then the green from the actual cardstock. And it all has to do on the, you know, to get this effect, though, you're going to have to know that your design, I knew that these little dots actually, when I did them, you notice that they've, with just a slight bit of uh, sanding, that they've already gone green, where these lines aren't quite as deep, and so they re retain the white. 
So, thank you for joining me this evening. It was just a quickie to show you some some playoffs of Mitzi's technique, and I'll see you again really soon. Oh, good. You've got an idea on how to embellish a cut? Oh, good. I know, isn't it really neat what we can do? And wax resist works really good. I'd like to do some techniques with fabric next, so I might be doing that. Uh, I can't promise you that I would do my free motion stitching with it, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do a base painting on fabric because with fabric you have uh, an issue sometimes where the markers want to bleed, which is fine. So that's going to be on our agenda really, really soon. Yes. Yay. Thank, thank you for joining me, Jan. And everybody else have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye.